Welcome to the playground. You think you've seen it all? Neuwelts FM, leading your marketing to where the magic happens. Ready for transformation? It might not work. That's why I do it. Who says that doesn't work? And here is your host. Ingo Stoll. Hello and welcome everybody to episode number 15 of Neuwerts FM, the podcast for routine killing and new marketing. I am your host Ingo Stoll and I'm grateful to present you another international episode in which we will talk about influencer marketing, how to use influencers to grow your business. Our special guest this week is CEO of Top Rank Online Marketing and author of Optimize, how to attract and engage more customers by integrating SEO, social media and content marketing, Mr. Lee Odden. So thanks for taking your time and we are now about to leave the comfort zone and turn Neuwerts to where the magic happens. Kick off! Kick off! How can I identify, connect and use influencers in my branch to help me grow my business? I guess that's quite a good question and hopefully one of the reasons that made you tune in at Neuwerts FM today. So we will dispense some reasonable thoughts and practical answers on that in our talk with Lee Odden right after the kickoff, be sure. But before we start, I'd like to ask you a question. How do you feel? Yeah. And one more question. What is the most relevant question that you have on your mind today? I wish we could turn this podcast into a live multi-user chat or even an instant face-to-face -face conversation now because we could easily start an engaging talk about your most relevant questions. I'm pretty sure about that. But uh, why do I ask you these questions? Um, it's, it's because I was asked them or these questions yesterday when taking part in a quite different networking meeting in Hamburg in Germany. Arne Gillard invited me to a group meeting of Kessels and Smith, a learning company supporting individuals and organizations and communities around the world in learning and development issues. And most of the approximately 50 people in that room standing there was uh, taking place right in the Maker Hub in Hamburg. They didn't know each other so far. So, um, and the way to get us connected and uh, started uh, starting engagement was by allowing us one minute to think about our most relevant question or topic we would like to have a conversation about. And after that, just pick two people and start doing exactly that. So for the next one and a half hours, um, all these 50 people, including me, were bound in rich, engaging and, and really relevant um, discussions with each other. And uh, in my small circle with a German consultant and a graduate student from the Netherlands, we lifted off with the question of leadership and the influence of digital means of communications. So does social media, new calibration tools uh, and all this is possible so far? Does it change leadership or does it make it easier to become a leader or lead uh, or does it make it more difficult? So the talk took quite a few turns and while inspiring each other with um, stories and, and definitely insights about failing and learning, we shared personal details of our lives as well. And we talked about collaboration and how to get people to share more and how important a shift in attitude in our connected digital world is. And this young student really, unfortunately I, I, I didn't remember his name, but I will surely remember his face and I hope he gets connected to me. So this young student really impressed me when he reported from his research study in which teachers um, at a school should be motivated to not only focus on their own subjects and their own classes, but to collaborate with other teachers from their school in order to develop a connected and synergetic uh, education plan for the pupils together. 
And they were not used to work together because they were trained on doing everything themselves. Um, the key observation for getting people out of their current behavior patterns was by asking. Asking people who did their job for maybe 30 or 40 years, why do you do it this way? Or what is your most relevant issue? What support would you like to get? And of course, how do you feel now that we are talking about these things? Very, very relevant and engaging questions indeed. And you know what? If the conversation focuses this way, people are willing to cooperate and they are willing to share. This is what you can observe. And all of a sudden, um, the student reported that these teachers that didn't work together for 30 or 40 years, they started collaborating and improving their educational plans. So by asking, actually, they started to change their reality. And this is what I call routine killing at work. So to connect the dots to the topic of this episode, how to use influencers to grow your business, asking relevant questions and start a conversation might be a good way to start, if you ask me, and it might be a very good way to start and build a new relation. So I guess we need to unlearn how to build relations because we need to stop telling people what to think and start asking them more about what they think, what their interests are and how do they feel. And there could be, couldn't be a better moment uh, to transition over to this week's special guest, Lee Odden, and fire off some more questions on the topic of influencer marketing and influencer relation building. We both met on the social media marketing world this year in San Diego and I was lucky to get a chance to have a little conversation with Lee and due to the fact that I was a bit nervous because uh, you don't talk to an expert like Lee uh, every day. Uh, so I, I mixed up the title of his brilliant book uh, right in the introduction. You will get it if you closely listen to it. But uh, yeah, my apologies, Lee. Uh, so please note the excellent book on getting all the digital marketing disciplines blended together is called Optimize. So enjoy our conversation on influencer marketing now. <laughs> Okay, so we are back at Neuwerts FM and I'm very pleased to say hello and welcome to Mr. Lee Odden, one of the most prominent speakers here on the social media marketing world. Hello Lee, thanks, hello. thanks <laughs> We're for shaking being hands. with me. <laughs> it's good to be here, thank you. Yeah, even it's audio, I think shaking hands is something, you know, it's a personal <laughs> thing. So, um, yeah, you were talking about, well, not only online marketing that you already Uh, that, uh, that you are pretty well known for. I mean, Odyssey is one of the books you actually published. You are mostly known for you are one, being one of the most and, and top speakers on online marketing. Mm -hmm. But what brought you here is the subject of influence. Yeah, it's, uh, the session I did was how to use content and influencers to grow your business. And, and interestingly enough, there was no objective to talk about or draw attention to influencers per se, because I'm, I'm a marketer. And the function I perform is customer you know, education resulting in customer acquisition. And it's becoming very competitive out there. Uh, you have concepts like Mark Schaefer's talked about content yeah. shock, the eclipse yeah. of the amount of content being produced, not being anywhere near uh, the number of people to consume it. And um, so standing out is an issue. Uh, in fact, um, you were just showing me a book that Eric Schmidt from Google wrote, and he's credited with saying, there's been more information created since the dawn of time to 2003 than, or, or every two days there's more information created than since the dawn of time to 2003. Yeah. And so how do we stand out? Um, and, and the role of trust is, is very, very important in cutting through the crap of the sheer volume of information and 
uh, the emphasis on visual marketing and social media and content marketing, brand publishing and all that stuff. So what's the punchline? And that is this notion of connecting with people who are already authoritative, uh, that already have a sphere of influence with communities that you as a brand would like to reach. And so uh, it's just, what I talked about was not just connecting with those folks, but treating, treating them as customers. Yeah. What can I give them in order to help, in order to inspire them to give me what I want? You know what I mean? So yeah. how can I create value for influencers um, in order to reach their audiences? And so the answer was, well, let's create content together. Let's yeah. co-create content together because most influencers, let's face it, they want attention on themselves, yeah. you know? Um, and so we've successfully done that. I ran a two-year experiment, basically, of partnering with different conferences, with Content Marketing World, mm -hmm. um, Blog World, NMX, um, and also uh, this conference. They've never had a media sponsor at this conference, and our company is the sole media sponsor for Social Media Marketing mm -hmm. World, and we did it by creating a, a speaker ebook. And it's had, it's close to 50,000 views in just a couple yeah. of weeks. So there you go. Um, my, my presentation was about the mechanics, the spirit and strategy, as well as the how-tos of how to put something like that together. So that would lead to the first question. Um, how do I find out who are the influencers for my industry? So, it, you know, some, sometimes you stumble upon tools saying, uh, this is, use this and you're yeah. going to find who is your influencer or measure it somehow. So how do you find out about influencers in your branch and what would you suggest how to right. find them best? So imagine you're in need of a product or a service. Uh, maybe you'll talk to your friend and say, hey, can you recommend something? And then they give you the recommendation and you go to Google and you'll search on it or whatever mm -hmm. engine you use and you'll get more information and maybe you're presented with Yelp reviews. And so there's multiple data points Mm -hmm. uh, to bring you to the conclusion of confidence that you make that choice. That same logic applies to identifying influencers. It's not enough to go use clout yeah. or tap influence or someone else and just look at some sort of score that's been normalized across their social networks to determine that they are the person that you should talk to. Yeah. Uh, I, I recommend layers, right? So there's some free tools that I recommended in my session. Um, one of them was BuzzSumo, mm -hmm. which is kind of a neat tool um, to identify influencers according to topics. And you can export the data to a CSV file. Yeah. Now I've got something to start with. And I can go over to um, uh, follower wonk yep. and get Twitter data or little bird to get Twitter data um, then I can go over to um, other uh, cred or um, tracker t-r-a-a-c-k-r yeah. or link decks which and they all function differently link decks is a neat tool it used to be an SEO tool but now it identifies one of the things it does is identify um, people who val validated their Google Plus authorship yeah. and, and, and it determines their um, sort of not page rank, but it determines their, their authority as it relates to yeah. Google Plus and the publications that they write for. And it also looks at their social popularity. So I can take LinkedIn data, BuzzSumo data, maybe some clout data, yeah. and then I overlay that on top of actual participation in an industry. You know, I can talk to customer service and our salespeople. I can look at who it is that I think's an influencer, and we can pull that all together and come up with a master list and start using scores and other things to narrow it down to ultimately answer in a very educated way who are the influencers that I should work with in my industry. The other thing I would add to that is it's not enough that they're popular or relevant. They need to be effective. Yeah. I mean, why, why connect with an influencer if they can't help you make something happen? Yeah. So we look for evidence that they make things happen. Yeah. And in that case, we end up working with often niche influencers not the big names necessarily. Yeah. So this is incredible. You, you talked about you know using different tools just to, to get a starting point, and then it's the next thing is you know effectiveness and then getting started. So how do you contact influencers? What do you suggest? Like um, you you talked about your own strategy um, on the conferencing thing. So obviously physical speaking is still a good means you know to to well to prove having evidence on the one hand but you know growing audience and bringing bringing topics across so yeah. do you have to be a speaker to be a good influencer 
No, 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 not at all. Um, many of the influencers that we identify for our clients who are in a diverse array of industries are often subject matter experts and they have a small number of people who are very passionate followers of what they have to say, but you would never know them otherwise. Okay. Um, so there are different kinds of influencers. There are the starfish, I like to call them. Uh, people are often speakers, book authors. I guess I kind of I might fit in that category. I'd rather not, but mm-hmm. um, with broad broad appeal and uh, can affect a large number of people. I mean, there are other people like like uh, Mike Stelzner or Chris Brogan or Jay Bear, yeah. especially recently, he's kind of blowing up. Um, so uh, having influence yourself, of course is going to facilitate your ability to connect with other influencers because you have credibility. Um, And part of my two-year journey and this experiment with working with conferences, uh, yeah, we've got one of the most popular marketing blogs on the web. So yeah, that's that's helped. And I do speak at a lot of conferences. But there are many people that work for brands that I wanted to connect with that didn't didn't know who I was. Some guy sending them a request to do something for him. And so... Um, there are tactics you can use to establish credibility in an ask. Um, before you get married, you do. There's a little romance involved. I hope. <laughs> so we must romance some of these influencers yeah. when you don't have credibility. We yeah. share their stuff on Twitter. We create signals yeah. by social participation with things that they care about. And then when the time comes to actually send in LinkedIn in mail. You introduce yourself succinctly. You establish credibility quickly. What do we have in common? Yeah. And we ask what we want, but we show them what's in it for them. Yeah. And see what happens. And and you can follow up and you can do some other things. But um, romance before the ask is really important when they don't know who you are. That's good. So this is just leading back to the social in social media. If you refer to romance, I like that pretty much. So, um, and if I compare to what, you know, the common sense of this conference and probably not only that conference is, is if you are too eager and if you're just, you know, if you're, you always have to ask yourself what drives you and if it's just, you know, the fame, okay, won't blame anybody for that, but uh, it has to be like a true interest and this is like, well, you can't create a romantic atmosphere if you're not really interested in that person probably. Right. So, um, let's say... It's, it's probably end, um, limited on how many um, of these influences you can address at a certain time. So would you suggest like going step by step, picking maybe like two, three, start there, start from the top, or is it just like... Um, well, it depends on what your reason is. Yeah. Uh, if, if my approach is strategic, um, it may call for me reaching out to a very large number of, of, of influencers mm-hmm. because collectively we're going to create something special together. Yeah. Uh, whether that is be participating at a conference mm-hmm. or it's uh, creating some content together. Um, maybe it's trying to align people for a cause that I know they might care about. And by proxy, that really, that experience with the cause may lead to other things that we, we would like to do with them. So um, for simplification purposes, of course, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be very useful and strategic to... Um, capture some big fish and then in your subsequent communications you can say hi Jane or John Doe yeah. uh, we would like to work with you we're already working with person one two and three that are super famous in the industry we'd love to add yeah. you to that list of course that kind of thing can be effective too yeah. so Lee I would draw a line here because I know your time is limited so thanks very much for appearing here and we had the chance to do a little take with Nicole Kelly And she said uh, she recommended to ask each and everybody you're interested in, you know, at least the one last question about the 1% of your learnings on your topic. So let's say the 1% you have to know that works on influence. So can Uh, you sum it up? The number one thing in influence or marketing or anything is your ability to empathize. If you can empathize with who you're trying to connect with, who you want to persuade to do what you want to do, you've got to be able to put your mind into their situation. Because when you do that, your communications will be meaningful, not mechanical. You're, um, You're going to be more relevant. And you're also going to be more efficient because the time it takes for them to do what you want them to do will be quicker because you've actually seen it through their eyes. Great. So thanks very much. Thank Hope you. to see you again.
Awesome. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. If you want to get more insights on influencer marketing, don't forget to check out the Top Rank online marketing blog on toprankblog.com. You will find the address in the Neuwerts FM show notes as well as a couple of direct hints to some of Lee Odin's new ebooks from the Content Marketing in Wonderland series. I like that one pretty much and I highly recommend you get yourself a free copy as soon as possible. And of course, if you like what you've heard, give us a review on iTunes or promote the show to friends of who you think they might be interested as well. I would recommend uh, and highly appreciate that. If it comes to the Neuwert 7 podcast, I'm pretty excited to announce that we will extend our program by mid of September and start a new additional format on a two weeks basis in which my colleague Stefan Röbbeln from Neuwerts will be the host of a talk with me and further guests on the most relevant news and topics from the social media world. This will be a German format only, but definitely worth to learn the language if you haven't started so far. Yeah. And... Uh, Yeah, so we have a new podcast. We haven't labeled it finally, so um, the name will be announced uh, probably during the next couple of days. But this podcast here will continue by the name of Neuwerts FM Transformers. We will focus on interviews uh, with great thought leaders and you will find it once a month probably, bringing you insights from awesome personalities transforming marketing industries and the way we may work and act in the future with their great ideas and concepts so you see we walk the talk and uh, the routine killing continues i'm off for now but i wish you a great time with lots of great questions to ask so i say bye bye take care and stay social